Good morning, my soccer universe. Oh, nice Europa League evening yesterday. Uh, basically, everything that you want from European knockout ties you got yesterday. Uh, it was quite exciting. You got the blowouts, you got the away turnaround, you got overtime, you got the surprises. Really, everything was in there. Uh, and again, it was the Veer 3 5 uh, split, which to a degree I understood for uh, at least two, two games. I mean, if you play out east, you want to have the early kickoff. Uh, there's no two ways about it because uh, it just gets way too late for normal people there. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's get started. Let's get started with the game that I, at the beginning of, uh, before this draw was made, thought might be one of the more exciting ones and it never lived up to that, which is uh, Salzburg-Napoli with Napoli holding a comfy 3-0 lead. And if there were any thoughts of Salzburg actually making something, they were quickly dispelled because Napoli right from the get-go was dominant, um, had a few chances one or two chances through Milik, just a little bit, and then they scored a goal uh, due to slapstick defending. It was a high press uh, on the left side, ball comes in, Salzburg cannot clear it or clears it, or uh, billiard moves, ball falls to Milik, who just somewhat spectacularly slots it home, 1-0 for Napoli, and that basically killed it all off. However, credit to Salzburg, they really wanted to acquit themselves uh, nicely from this Europa League campaign and they got three goals. So the whole thing reads a lot tighter than it was, but it never really was. It was 1-1 at halftime, I think Dabur made the goal, then Gulbranson, and then I actually forget that last player who scored. Uh, I think they even hit the post once. So you know, it could, it could have looked much more, um, it looks much more dramatic than it actually was in Stampo and then I think went into uh, power saving mode and Salzburg yeah uh, that win is at least for the Austrian league important and it will not all depend on the Ajax draw that's the big story in Austria is uh, will remain in 11th spot which means that Salzburg needs to get one more win than Ajax and yeah uh, if it goes for that Ajax should not get a point anymore however I do not care honestly uh, and I might bite my words there because Lask is doing so well at the moment but um, I wouldn't mind if Ajax goes on in the final of the Champions League. Another anticlimactic one that one probably was the most surprising result of the thing is Kiev, che no not surprising but uh, most boring uh, game Kiev Chelsea 5-0 um, was very quickly turned 2-0, two goals by Giroud, then I think Alonso made one just before halftime. Giroud added a fourth and Hudson Adoy a fifth. Um, I guess the playing surface wasn't, wasn't all that bad uh, to completely dominate Kiev. That tie sounded a lot more juicy than it actually was. So Chelsea kind of under Lines. I was just about to say undermines, which doesn't make any sense. Underlines their claim to being the favorites in the competition. However, the first real uh, good game or great game was Krasnodar Valencia, which was kind of expected. And yes, I'm wearing my new Valencia shirt, so you can already guess where this went. However, it was not straightforward, and I'm not very, very because I'm so proud of Valencia. I just needed an, an excuse to wear this wonderful shirt. Uh, Honestly, Krasnodar did what Krasnodar does you uh, and they are very, uh, very good team at home. Uh, playing a style of power soccer that is admirable, to be honest. Uh, and they put the pressure on Valencia and it was in a way only a matter of time until they will score. Um, and score they did in the 85th minute through Suleimanov, a wonderful strike. Uh, uh, from the edge of the box it curls really nicely into the wide corner 
and at that point, due to the uh, away goal, it's 2 2 overall, but away goal go Krasnodar, uh, Krasnodar is through to the next round. Uh, and it took Valencia Guedes in the 93rd minute, basically the last possible, possible possibility. They score the all important away goal and go through to the neck to the quarterfinals. It was not straightforward. I think uh, Valencia had a great first half in Valencia. From then on, Krasnodar, I think, was the overall better team. Maybe not as dominant as Valencia was in those 45 or 30 minutes, but this is where Valencia secured their uh, spot in the next round. Another, what I thought will be a great matchup, in a, to a certain degree it was, but it, I, I truly didn't live quite up to it, uh, was Inter against Frankfurt. And I gotta say, Inter looks to me like a team that is now focusing on the derby. Uh, it was almost a no-show by Inter, uh, to be honest. Uh, Frankfurt had a huge chance hitting the bar already, I think in the second minute or so. And in the fifth minute, Jovic uh, gets the ball of an Inter defender, runs to, to the box, chips it over the goalkeeper and via the, the post, it goes in. Wonderful goal, 1-0, and Frankfurt had many chances to extend that lead. There was not too much coming from Inter. In the second half, maybe at the beginning, Inter tried to get something going a little bit, but there was really not too much happening. And in the end, Frankfurt, I want to say it's almost an uncomfortable 1-0 win. Uh, and again, the Frankfurt fans, they impressed me. They really do. They get 13,500 that are all put up there in the Milan sector on top. Uh, and celebrate with their team. So yeah, I expected this to be a much closer tie. I think in the first leg it was, in the second leg not, there wasn't much. Now the r surprise I was hoping for was Rennes against Arsenal and that one got a big uh, damper for me already very early. Aubameyang in the fifth minute uh, gets the 1-0 in the 15th uh, in Maitland Niles, makes it 2-0 and yeah, that was exactly what he didn't want to have. I gotta say, Ren kind of acquitted himself, they needed to collect himself, it took them a while, but in the end they managed to do so. And yeah, got back in the game. I have not seen those black jerseys by Ren, but I gotta, gotta say they looked fine, they looked absolutely great. Uh, not perfect, but they looked really nice with the silver accent. Uh, yeah, and then in the end, you know, Nyang uh, hits the post. You think there is a chance in there, but Obama Young makes it 3 0 and Arsenal is safely through. Aren was pushing for the one goal, it didn't happen. So, yeah, it ends 3 0 Arsenal, and Arsenal is through to the next round. A team that is, I think, erratic is probably the right term. I cannot really. Uh, I know they are strong at home, but away from home they are not, and that is uh, a very weird uh, call, call, call combination. We are Real Zenit, and a 2-1 to Via Real, who had already a 3-1 lead from the first game in St. Petersburg. Uh, it was 2-0, I think Baka made it 2-0 in the 47th, and then uh, Ivanovic got a very late goal for Zenit. Not that it really, really matters, and this is a surprise. We are Real uh, making it that far and they are battling against the relegation in uh, in Spain, in La Liga, so kudos to them. They are having a pretty good uh, European season, they should have a better La Liga season. I think this is always where things sometimes get messed, uh, mixed up. But I remember Leicester when they had to run to the Champions League quarterfinals and they were not looking quite safe. Uh, and then the two games that went into overtime, Benfica against Dinamo Zagreb, that was a hard fault, 1-0 uh, regulation win for Benfica. Zagreb very defensively, but sound. I think they at, the, at the beginning they even had, had some chances, but then Benfica got into attack mode and it took a goal by Jonas to see them through uh, to overtime. 
from everything I could see, I didn't see much, but from everything I hit, it was not a pretty game. It was more a uh, fighting game. But once it reached overtime, you had the feeling there was only ever going to be one winner, and that was Benfica. Um, Ferro made it with a wide range shot in the 94th, 2 0. Then a very stupid sending off uh, for uh, Zagreb where a player gets get yellow for a foul, where he doesn't think it is a foul, uh, puts the mouth on the re referee and gets a second yellow and sent off. To be honest, I think it's weak refereeing if you do that. And I don't want to say more. Yes, it is within, the, but it give two yellows within two minutes and send the player off. It's just stupid, absolutely stupid. On both parts, on both parts, and then probably the best goal of the evening uh, in the third, uh, the three nil in the one hundred fifth, just a minute later. Uh, Grimaldo, uh, I mean, the shot took a dip, uh, almost un unbelievable. So Benfica is through to the next round, and to be honest, if I look at the remaining teams, Benfica and Napoli, those are teams that I would love if they could win the thing. But the game of the evening definitely, almost definitely happened in Prague. Uh, Slavia against Sevilla it was already a 2-2 from the first leg, which was a surprising result. Because Sevilla, uh, it seemed like they can score at will, but seemingly they had some trouble there. And I still say that the 2-2, uh, the goal that made it 2-2 is one of the greatest uh, accidental goals that you will ever see. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Wonderful. Uh, game was played in Prague uh, to a full house, of course. I mean, Slavia is one of the big teams in the Czech Republic. And I, I was thinking yesterday that there are so many great teams from, you know, not only Austria, but also uh, Czech, uh, the Czech Republic, um, Slovakia, Hungary, and so on, that had have a steep history. They're steeped in history, and there should be a way to kind of connect these clubs again because I I'm in Austria I don't know much about the Czech League I think there sh if there would be some cooperation between those leagues I think this would work well for everyone but I know UEFA doesn't like those things Slavia took a lead in the 14th minute too and Ngadeu Ngadjui Ngadeu Ngadjui Ngadeu Ngadjui whatever uh, <laughs> Try pronouncing that one. Uh, who actually uh, slotted home after after corner, which again was surprising. I always you you have this automatic reflex that that you think that Sevilla is the stronger team, but Slavia fought hard, and you gotta give a lot of credit. And their uniforms, I didn't know that they play in light blue socks, but it looked uh, it looked gorgeous. The half half uh, red and white with white pants and uh, light light blue socks, wonderful. Um, and with the Red Sox, the Sevilla away kit also looked okay, although I don't like the grey shoulders. Uh, ben Yedda gets a penalty, which at the point was a little bit lucky, but yeah, was a penalty. Uh, so Sevilla gets it and uh, Ben Yedda uh, makes it 1-1. Right after uh, the break, a foul from Navas, which was a mere touch. It was. It was a very, very soft penalty, but Suchek steps up in the 46 and makes it 2-1 one, one, uh, one for Slavia. So uh, we're getting into this territory um, that it gets really in interesting. And El Haddadi in the 54th scores another wonderful goal. I think that's right up there with the 3-0 by Benfica. Those were the best goals of the evening. 54th minute and it's 2-2 two, two, and, and you're thinking, oh, now it's 2-2. Two, two. Now even... Sevilla needs only a goal to advance, and even if Slavia scores, they still only need one goal to advance. So it's, at that point, it really got interesting from that point of view, because before that, uh, Slavia held the advantage with the away goal, but at that point, the advantage with the away goal will fall to Sevilla. But there was not too much happening in this, at least from what I could get up, because I was, you know, I watched the goal zone, we were flipping games, so uh, there was not too much happening, it went all to overtime, it was pretty much, yeah, let's settle this in overtime, which is uh, some, some, something I never quite understood. And Sevilla gets the third goal through Vasquez in the 98th minute, 
and at that point everyone is thinking okay Sevilla is through to the next round nope because just four or four minutes later Van Buren who came on makes it 3-3 and the stadium erupts and I actually was I always had the feeling that once uh, Muni Al Haddadi made the 2-2 that Sevilla had the better of the game it was only a matter of time Sevilla will probably go through to be honest I really was hoping for Slavia to pull the upsets because uh, I just like it when such a big traditional club gets a little bit further in European condition from a sm now smaller country so and we have seen Sevilla lift the trophy way too often so uh, just for that reason so it is 3-3 and Slavia pulls out I mean you could see there were cramps all over again and Slavia really fighting fighting I mean we don't need to say much Sevilla is the uh, technically more gifted team but they're also Pandora's box you never know what you get from Sevilla and it's in more almost the last minute that a free kick that goes into the wall it cannot be cleared by Sevilla it goes out wide where there are three attackers from Slavia probably one offside that actually go away so then the ball falls to Traore uh, who puts kind of a tepid shot onto the net which is touched by the goalkeeper Vajlik and then Jar, I think it's his name, Jar, uh, not Kia, or, uh, cannot clear it off the line and it goes in. It's the scrappiest winning goal you'll ever see. And Slavia is through to the next round, Sevilla is out. Absolute amazing result, an amazing game. This was the game of the evening, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, I love games like that. I this is this is all what the European competition is is about, including this upset. Well, as I said, I I totally enjoy Europa League. Yes, it's maybe not the greatest soccer. Uh, the Champions League dishes up the better, better, better soccer, but the way that you can get that many games and really follow, I like that. Although I still think it could be a little bit more split up. Let me know if you watched any games and if yes, which ones and um, what's your thought on these. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll give you a video on the draw, not a live video, because I, I need to work, but I'll give you my thoughts on the draw uh, probably latest tomorrow morning. And up until then, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.